Telefume, this is your time. You have taken us through this week on the theme prayer works, and we are really convinced and we have tested the Lord that prayer works. Please take us through again, uh, Pastor Lifume, in this series of prayer works. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Knene. Thank you. Good morning, saints, and happy Sabbath and uh, happy day. As we start, shall we also bow our heads just for a short word of prayer? Father in heaven, I'm not praying because I despise the prayer that has been prayed already. I'm in agreement with that prayer. Please continue to tabernacle with us. Help me expound your word. Help us to hear you speak to us at this juncture. Pray and ask for all this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, saints, uh, we are concluding our series this morning. Uh, we have been uh, talking under the theme, prayer works. And because prayer works, you will always witness works of prayer. And um, this morning, as we conclude, uh, I want us to look at the topic that says how faith works. So I want us to talk a little about how faith works. We, we have seen the example of Jesus he has displayed. We have seen in the word of God how he has utilized prayer in his life and what prayer has done. So I want us now to, 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 to look at the topic that says how faith works. And I'm inviting you to turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, there we read verses 23 and 24. Mark chapter 9, we read verses 23 and 24. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it reads thus. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. The New International Version puts it like this. If you can, rather, if you can, is a question, said Jesus. Everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. I will be uh, expounding on this based on the new international version rendition of the text. Yes, uh, if you go back a little, maybe from verses 12, and you jump around, you will get the context um, of this passage. Right from verses 12 and 13, you will notice that it was difficult for the disciples to grasp the idea that their Messiah would have to suffer. The Jews at the time who studied on who were students uh, of the Old Testament prophecies expected the Messiah to be great king like David. That's what they expected of the Messiah who would overthrow the enemy. And at the time their enemy was Rome. So their vision was limited to their own experiences. They could not understand that the values of God's eternal kingdom were different from the values of the world. That's what they did not grasp at the time. They wanted relief from their present problem. But deliverance from sin is far more better than deliverance from physical suffering or political oppression. Our understanding of an appreciation for Jesus, rather, and appreciation for Jesus must go beyond what he can do for us here and now. And this is what they miss. If you look at verse 18, why couldn't the disciples drive out the evil spirit that had caused the boy to be mute 
Because if you read verse 18, the man that cries out and responds to Jesus' question, he says, and where, wherever it seizes him, that is this spirit, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Why couldn't they do that, the disciples of Jesus? Because in chapter six of the same book, verse 13, we are told or we read there that they drove out demons while on their mission to the villages when they were sent out by Jesus. Perhaps they had special authority only for that trip, or perhaps their faith was faltering. Mark tells you this story to show that the battle with Satan is a difficult ongoing struggle. It does not come to an end. He never gives up. Victory over sin and temptation comes through faith in Jesus Christ, not through our own efforts. And that had to be clear. So if you look at, at, at verse 23, this is what you will see in a nutshell. Jesus' words do not mean that we can automatically obtain anything we want if we just think positively. No, this does not take positive thinking, not at all. Jesus meant that anything is possible if we believe, because nothing is too difficult for God. That's what Jesus meant. We cannot have everything we pray for as if by magic all prayer is, 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 is magical. No, we could not do that. But with faith, we can have everything we need to serve him. So what does this mean? It means that the attitude of trust and confidence that the Bible calls belief of faith in Hebrews 11 verse 1 is nothing something we can obtain without help. Faith is a gift from God. We don't go and buy it. We don't purchase it anywhere. We don't work for it. God gives it to us as a gift. And that is recorded in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. No matter how much faith we have, though, we never reach the point of being self-sufficient. We never. Faith is not stored away like money in the bank. Growing in faith is a constant process of daily renewing of trust in Jesus. That's exactly what I want us to understand when we talk about how faith works. The boy we are talking about in this story, or we have read about in this story, was possessed by a spirit, from, by this spirit from childhood. He exhibited the symptoms of epilepsy and had to be constantly watched because he often fell into fire or water when this attack attacked him when, when he was near water or near fire. He convulsed so badly that it seemed his body would be ripped apart. That's how terrible this attack was. He had lost the ability to speak. He had gone mute at this time. The disciples, in the absence of Jesus, had tried to heal him, but had failed. Now the father appeals to Jesus. He says to Jesus, if you can, if you can do anything because your disciples have failed, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. This is why in response, Jesus is asking a question. If you can, if you can, then he says, everything is possible for him who believes. I want us to look at that. If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. The boy seemed to be incurable. The disciples had tried and failed, but Jesus asserted everything is possible for him who believes. This assertion is stated over and over throughout the Bible. When Abraham and Sarah loved off the idea that she would give birth in her old age, God challenged him by asking, is anything too hard for the Lord? In Genesis 18, 14, when the disciples pondered how the lost could be saved, 
Jesus said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, verse 26. Yes, my dear friends. Yes, beloved saints. Faith is not a bridge over troubled waters. But faith is a pathway through the troubled waters. Yes, my dear friends. I want us to understand one thing. That faith is not just believing. It is believing in something. The value of our faith is determined by the object of our faith. Faith in God is better than faith in people or circumstances. So when Jesus said that all things are possible to him who believes, he meant to him who believes in God. Faith, 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 faith engages almighty power and inexhaustible resources. That is why all things are possible to him who believes. Yes, my dear friends, when Jesus says, if you can, he's surprised that this father of this boy is saying, if you can do anything, then when he responds, the father caught up, the father understood that it is not about what Jesus can do, but it is about, it is about what he as the father can believe. So immediately when he understood, he cries out, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Yes, my dear friends, it is not about what God can do for you. It is about what you believe. So it is, does not depend on God. So when this man was inserting an if in the ability of God, Jesus turns around, he inserts an if in his ability to believe, in other words, to trust God. So he understood it was not about God, it was about him. Yes, even in your situation, it is not about what God can do for you, it is not about what Jesus can do, but it is about how you believe, what you believe, who you believe in. Yes, my dear friends, the only limiting factor it seems is our lack of faith. The Bible often encourages us to ask great things of God and to expect great things from him. But our faith is not as large as his willingness. Two things get in the way of our faith in him. The first one is our tendency to go it alone. We think we are quite capable of running our own lives and creating our own successes, yet we are not, my dear brother. Really, do we acknowledge our utter dependence on him for all that we have and all that we accomplish? We cheat ourselves out of the wisdom and enabling support he would freely share with us as if we would just draw on his resources. We would rather do it our way and take the glory for our achievements. Self-dependence upholds or unplugs us from the power. It unplugs us from the source of power, God. It unplugs us from his power, self-dependence. Second thing, we are overwhelmed by the apparent impossibilities of in our circumstances. I repeat, he is a God of impossibilities. Things that are impossible to us are possible to God, my dear friends. Like the Father, the father of the boy, all we need to do is to see not what has worked, but see what we cannot see with our naked eye. You see, the boy's father only saw what has not worked. He is saying, if you can do anything, it is only because he saw what didn't work when the disciples tried to exercise the evil spirit. We look at our limited resources and weigh them up against our needs and shake our heads, throw our hands in the air in despair. We even question God's interest in our everyday living and his willingness to engage with us on this level or on that level. Yet, every day, Jesus is teaching us how to pray because we have the model of prayer. When he said, give us this day our daily bread, he was actually indicating to us that there is a reservoir 
the resources never go out. We have God, a God who is able to sustain us every day. He who knows of our most basic needs is fully aware of our impossible situations. Your situation that you are in right now, it may seem impossible. He's aware of that situation. If we struggle to accept this, we can at least pray as the father did pray. I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Oh yes, may God help us look beyond the visible realities to see the greater reality of his infinite love and power. May we experience this God who is able to allow us to experience his power and experience the fact that those things that are impossible to us are possible to him. So when we experience him, do the impossible with us, in us, and through us, we will then realize, yes, all we need to do is to ask for him to help us overcome. Time you pray, as you pray, you are doubting in your heart if God is hearing you, if God is going to help you. As you pray, you are asking yourself if God is hearing you, if God will do anything. Like the Father, you are saying, because you have been looking at what did not work, you are saying, if you can, God, do it. I want you to know he can. This is a God who creates out of nothing. This is a God who steps out of nothing and he occupies nothing with something. And when he looks at his creation, he's able to say, and because he sees that it is good, he says it is good. The Bible does not say he said it was good, but it says he saw that it was good. In other words, even if it was not good, if he says it is good, it would become good. But because the Bible is clear, he saw that is good. It means this God is able to step up and look at his creation and sees that it is good. It is good because he, God, made it so. So if in our lives are able to be good lives when we depend on him, that's how faith works, my dear friends. We grow in faith every now and again. Every day, God gives us instances, experiences that will draw out this faith that is in us. So when you pray and you say, when you pray, Lord, increase my faith, like this father, when he says, Lord, charm my faith, he was actually saying, give me more experiences that will draw out this faith, this dependence on you. So my dear friends, yes, you will have things that will challenge you. They are not there to cause you to stumble. They are not there to cause you to doubt God. You need to use those as springboards to engage God in prayer and you will see his power and his responses and he will pull you through. May his face shine upon you. May his grace sustain you. May his grace be sufficient to you now until we are caught up to meet with him in the sky. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for being such a good God to us. Thank you for your love, your care, your message, which I knew every day. Thank you for taking us through this week, dear Lord, this journey. Help is helping us understand the importance and the significance of prayer and the fact that prayer does work. All we need to do is to stay connected with you. Thank you for being such a good God to us, dear Lord. Your children have made decisions to make friends with you, decisions to ask you to help them overcome their unbelief. Oh yes, dear Lord, some may have made decisions to start a relationship and they, they walk with you. I pray that you guide them. I pray that you bless them. I pray that when all is said and done, they will be able to spend their eternity with you. Oh yes, dear Lord, take over. Take charge. And as we will be basking in your presence throughout this day, may we be blessed. I pray and ask for all this 
in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and 